Hey guys, this is Rick. After Friday's video of looking at the Bitcoin BTC narrative and how it really doesn't stand up to standard, I thought we were going to take a little bit more positive note and look at what the adoption path for Bitcoin is. Because understanding how Bitcoin or cryptocurrency in general will come to dominate the economy is absolutely key to guiding development efforts and support efforts toward that adoption path. You have to, as we say in entrepreneurship, understand what your front bowling pin is to get the rest of the economy. And let's take a look at what the data says here and what I said in 2011 to compare it. So, Bitcoin, which I'm using as a general term for cryptocurrency at large here, has an enormous potential to bring liberty, particularly from governments and central banks, which are effectively a fourth branch of government beside the executive, judicial and legislative branches. But it needs to be brought in by profit motive. Liberty through profit motive. This is the guiding star that needs to guide development support, and basically everything we do as a community. And let me explain why. In 2011, I outlined a number of things in Bitcoin as I discovered it. Some of those things were Bitcoins for opportunities, for drivers, for uptake. And I also listed four hurdles. Interestingly, when I listed four hurdles, usability was at the top, but scalability was not even in the list of four hurdles, because I considered it trivial to change the block size limit at the time. What do you know? Some things can be socially constructed, even if they're not technical problems. But in order to get this liberty, we must be razor focused on the adoption path. The adoption path. How are we going from where we are to a society where everybody uses Bitcoin or cryptocurrency in general. What is the path from A to B? And it's okay to be wrong. It's okay to have to backtrack a little, but you need to have that goal of being off the top of the mountain. You gotta see that summit ahead of you. And it's okay to imagine a path and have to backtrack a little to take a different path, but you gotta be clear on your direction. Our direction is nothing short of having a comprehensive Bitcoin economy where somebody can pay wages in Bitcoin, pay rent in Bitcoin, have their entire life outside of the central banking system. Because as we know, it's gonna come down at some point or other, at which point this is gonna be, this needs to be ready. This needs to be ready. It's like this meme we saw in um, last week what are you trying to tell me that I can trade my Bitcoin for millions someday? And Morpheus, no, Neo. When Bitcoin is ready, you won't have to. And this is the idea. This is the idea. The idea is to not have to change back to central bank money. We're only gradually exchanging all money we have for cryptocurrency, and we're receiving more and more of our inflow for in crypto form. But in order to get there, we need a number of things. First of all, we need to make absolutely clear that on the, world, on the road to total world domination, we need, yeah, as in you're, you're writing some software, you're launching it, hey, here's total world domination version 1.0. In order to make this happen, we need other people to adopt cryptocurrency and Bitcoin. And in order to, for other people to adopt it, we can't just ask them to. They need to want to use cryptocurrency. And therefore, we need to identify the reasons they are going to be adopting cryptocurrency and Bitcoin. This takes a little bit of going outside the box because they are not going to use our reasons. Our reasons are, hey, this is cool tech, and wow, I can buy pizza with this, and hey, look at all the, all the exchange rates going way up to the moon, and sound money, and 
censorship resistance and sound money and so on and so forth. But other people will not be concerned with this. They don't care about security, they don't care about censorship resistance, they do not care about decentralization. Other people have three reasons for changing their current money flow into a different money flow, because that requires effort. Change requires effort. Change is a cost. In order for people to take that cost, you need to justify it. They have three reasons for taking this cost. Profit, more profit, and even more profit, in that order. In other, way, in other words, if we want people to adopt Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, and we do, then we need to put ourselves in their shoes and see how they can profit who can profit and how can they profit? This requires a little bit of entrepreneurial thinking, which is essentially the business equivalent of empathy. You put yourself in somebody else's shoes and see where they can save costs. They are not going to run something or change something or take a cost because you want them to. They're going to take a cost because they can make a profit from taking that cost down the road. So, where can you make a profit from using cryptocurrency? That is the million dollar question, or as it would be the trillion dollar question. Contraband is the first, or was the first case with Silk Road. It was kind of a bootstrap. Today we know that people who use Bitcoin to trade contraband are, are kind of morons because it's tr much more traceable than ordinary central bank cash, which is why the US dollar in bags of money, literal bags of money, still reigns supreme. There are privacy-focused coins. I predict there will be a market for at least one privacy-focused coin in addition to a gen more general use coin in the future. But still, contraband has been a profit reason, but it's a relatively small market. Even though contraband drugs are the world's thirst, third largest market by market cap after oil and weapons, and contraband weapons for that matter is no small share of the weapons market either, there is a very long tail here. You would rather have every other market than these three if, if you can choose between one of these three or everything else. Still, it was a good bootstrap. Next, we've been talking a lot about remittance in the Bitcoin communities. As in, when you're sending money abroad, then obviously you can s save a lot of money on transfer costs by using Bitcoin or using cryptocurrency. There was even this comparison with Western Union, which kind of fell out of fashion when Bitcoin BTC became more expensive to use than Western Union. So that was kind of fiasco, to be honest. Bitcoin BTC is now down to processing relatively cheap payments again, relatively cheap fees again, even though the average fee paid is still on in the four to five dollar range. It is not a Western Union disruptor at this point in time. You need to be more than an order of magnitude better for people to change their ways, is a, is a general rule of thumb. If you're not at least an order of magnitude better, you're just an also ran. You're just an also ran. Remittance. But, but again, that's a small market, like expats send and, and migrants sending money home. It's a very, very small niche. You want to go mass market. You want to change the world. You want to have this golden CD master called world domination. Import-export, now we're getting somewhere. The, when buying goods from China, the clearance for money is actually really, really cumbersome. You need to present a letter of credit in the, in the Chinese port and banks t can take ten thousands or even hundreds of thousands of dollars to clear a payment and it takes six to eight weeks. Here is an obvious reason to use cryptocurrency instead. But again, again, it is not mass market. This does not touch everybody. 
We need something that touches everybody. And that something is credit cards. Credit cards. A credit card company, when you're paying with a credit card, the credit card company and the general overhead takes 2 to 4% on every transaction, straight off the top. This is a middleman that can be eliminated, or a chain of middlemen that can be eliminated when using cryptocurrency. And it's important to here to remember that this is off the top. The typical profit margin for an online mer for any merchant is four to five percent. This means that online merchants stand to double their profit margin, double their profit margin just by accepting another form of payment. And this is where you start thinking in entrepreneurial terms. This is start when you start thinking in terms of who can profit from what I have here and how can I help them profit? Because obviously if you can help them profit, you can take a small share of it, yeah, right? That's how it works. And initially, this would just be an ad a doubling of the profit margin for an online merchant. But over time, once enough merchants adopt, this will turn into a competitive advantage on price. That if you're accepting Bitcoin, you can get a lower price and put your push your profit margins down to a healthy 4 to 5%, but have a lower price than all the competition, which puts you in a better seat, which again drives up your profit margin. So I am arguing that this one scenario, online merchants, that is cryptocurrency's front bowling pin. Because at that point, at the point when online merchants are pushing down the price to a new equilibrium where they have 4 to 5% profit margin, then credit cards will be priced out of the market. This scenario is our front bowling pin because this leads to adoption pressure in other segment. This leads to adoption pressure. Once you take the front bowling pin, then you'll see pressure start to fall because merchants will want to not change money back into central bank money. If they have money in Bitcoin, that creates adoption pressure outward from the front bowling pin. That's how a front bowling pin works in adoption theory. So once merchants start cutting exchanges out of the loop in order to eliminate the spread losses from cryptocurrency exchange to central bank money and back again, then more and more segments will get included in the ecosystem from there. And they will go through the same cycle of starting out with something small, eliminating a loss and gradually growing. That's how we get to this scenario. That's how we get to the point where bitcoins will be worth millions, but you'll never ever need to trade them back for central bank money because other people have helped change and shape the ecosystem to a point where it's no longer necessary. Involving those other people and helping them profit from doing so is absolutely crucial and that's how we create liberty through profit motive. It's noteworthy that the easiest way to transfer money between two banks is still the ridiculous notion of withdrawing money in one bank and walking on foot to the second bank and depositing it again. This is the world we have been competing against. This is the world we have been competing against. However, the window is closing. The window is closing. And this is absolutely crucial to understand. Bitcoin and cryptocurrency still have a window of opportunity, but it is closing because banks are waking up to the threat and they are adapting and they are adapting very, very quickly now. 
In the Nordic markets, banking on mobile is instant and free, even across banks. Even across banks. Private banking is seen as completely free because rational economic actors act on the margin and there's no additional charge for every additional transaction. Yes, you have a fee for a yearly a fee for your account, but that's not how people think and that's not what counts on the margin. Banking on mobile for private use is instant and free. This beats Bitcoin. This is better than Bitcoin. This is a real threat to future Bitcoin dominance. And for merchants in this system, banks are charging 15 cents for transactions from mobile to merchants. That is where they get their ticks per transaction. That is where they cut the ticket. We need to be at least an order of magnitude better. Security doesn't cut it. S decentralization doesn't cut it. Censorship resistance doesn't cut it. Only profit, more profit, and even more profit does. We need to be at least an order of magnitude better. We can be an order of magnitude better than credit cards. But banks have already rolled out debit cards. Debit cards that are complete drop-in replacements for credit cards but which don't charge the 2 to 4% per transaction. The window of opportunity is closing. We want liberty through profit motive. We want total world domination. But be totally aware, this window is closing. And this includes the online merchants. Once they've all gone on board with a 15 cent instant transaction, to banking scheme, there is very, very little reason for them to change to cryptocurrency. It could be that they're accepting international orders, but you know, realistically, most orders are within a country. This is Berlin, Germany. I typically don't shop from France or Poland or Italy. I shop from Germany. I sometimes ch shop from the US, sometimes from UK, but that's even me being an expat here. Most people would shop from Germany and let that be it. New regulations in the European Union say that interbank transfers are instant starting in 2018. It might be that banks can charge for an instant transfer, but they are catching up. It, this used to take three to five banking days. A new EU requirement says that it needs to be available instantly with instantly defined as perceived as instant and happening in the complete settlement chain within a few seconds. Banks are catching up, make no mistake about it. And if this takes hold, Bitcoin and cryptocurrency will lose the initiative. It'll risk becoming a niche thing for geeks and nerds, like PGP fell by the way, wayside when crypto was poised to take over the world and give everybody privacy. We must not let this happen. Because, again, the world waits for no one, as we saw in the last video. The world waits for no one. We need to make cryptocurrency win. And we can only do that by providing liberty through the profit motive. Next Friday, we're going to come back to a video looking a little bit of, at bridge building and engineering in general, and why it's crucial to understand the domain you're engineering for. Because if you don't, you're going to be a net negative contributor, and I'm going to show how. Until then.